Hey guys. I was um, thinking this morning, I know this is not my usual day to post, but I had this so strongly in my spirit. Um, I want to talk about uh, what to do in in the middle. I was thinking this morning of when I when I was in high school and um, when I didn't know what to do so I went to elementary school went to high school graduated high school and then after high school I went to a program for people with disabilities at Humber College, which is the university, and I went to the Lakeshore campus, which is the smaller campus, um, to a program called Access for Success. It was um, a program that focused on career building and um, and um, English um, for people with disabilities and then I went from from there to um, I took a couple of writers classes and I took um, I applied for journalism and I didn't get in so I took a couple of writers classes and then I didn't get into those, but I went to uh, study journal. Um, I went to a couple of writer classes. I took a um, memoir writing course at Ryerson. I took a couple of mystery writing courses. I took creative writing. I took all those courses and they kind of, well, they taught me things and they were lessons, um, but they didn't really lead, well, in the end they led me to where I wanted to go, but in the end they didn't really like take me to where I thought. But at the end, you know, God works everything together for good. So, at the end of all that, I kind of, I ended up going uh, to Tyndale, <laughs> and at the end of Tyndale, I started off with a religion, um, with a English degree, but the English degree was taking so long that I switched to um, their fast track program, which would be, which was three, three weeks of class at night. So, um, so that allowed me to get my religious studies uh, degree. Um, so now I have a bachelor in religious education. And I said all that to say, uh, when I was um, in high school, 
I was thinking about this this morning for some reason. And when I was in high school, and my last year of high school, I was about 17. Um, and I took co co op, which is um, you work for a company or whatever to get school credit. So uh, I signed up for co op and I worked at a school and while I was while I was um, before I started to work at a school um, my my TA at the time s suggested why don't we do the lunch club where you could arrange um, uh, where you could arrange certain speakers to come in um, for people with disabilities at lunchtime to speak about different things. And I was really excited about this idea. But another person said, oh no, uh, she wouldn't have much to do and it wouldn't be enough work for a credit but i got this idea that and this other person the person that said no to the lunch club idea suggested that i work at a school um for my co-op so i got this idea one night, what if I could do both? But being 17 and not having the confidence at the time, I didn't suggest it. Um, and I was thinking of that now. Um, although I can't go back, I'm like, what if I I would have said I would have had the guts at 17 to say, I don't want to work at a school. I don't want to go to um, that program for disabilities, for people with disabilities. I, I want to volunteer and get my feet wet for a minute and find out what I really want to do. And I was thinking about this. I love my life now. I love writing and and preaching and speaking and doing all of that. I love being on TV. I love songwriting. I love what I'm doing now. But if I could give any advice to people who are going into university or don't know what they're going to do, my advice would be take your time. Don't, um, I would say when I wanted to take, take a gap year, and for those of you who don't know what a gap year is, it's a year where you stop going to school for a year and work. When I wanted to do that, I was discouraged from doing that. Somebody said, uh, no, uh, you'll, you'll make money and you'll never go back to school. But looking at it now, um, although I love my life now, um, but I wish I had taken the time to really suss out what I wanted to do, to not, to not just go with whatever everybody else was doing, because, because all the people I knew want, uh, wanted to go to this program, all the people with disabilities I knew one to go with this program and there's nothing wrong with this program but it just wasn't for me 
Um, and I didn't have the courage to say no. I don't want to do that. And um, so I let people talk me into what they wanted for me because of what they saw and of what other people with disabilities were doing. Um, I, yeah, and I was, um, and I, I just wish I had said, you know what, I don't want to do co-op at a school. I don't want to, you know, I would rather do the lunch club thing or do something else according to my abilities. Because quite often when people see you doing, uh, when people see you as a certain type of person, um, they try and put you into this box. And if you're not strong enough, you can just end up just going with the box and never realizing that your destiny, your purpose is greater than the box. And I would say to anybody now um, going into university and graduating high school, take your time to decide what you want to do. Like, I'm all a proponent of um, um, uh, formal education, college, and university. If you know what you're going to do, many university students just take anything because that's what they they feel they ought to do without taking some time to really understand what they want to do. Now, when, when I'm saying take time, I'm not saying to just um, graduate high school and, and sit home and eat on the couch and, and play on your phone. No, I'm saying while you're searching for what you want to do, be active. Be active. Volunteer in different kinds of settings. Volunteer um, apprentice in different kinds of areas until you find your niche. A lot of people are like, what's my purpose? What's my purpose? Lord, what my purpose is? Well, and I'm a proponent of um, the fact that purpose comes by doing, not just by sitting around and asking God, what do I do? A volunteer for something, apprentice for something work with somebody, and if you don't like that, you can try something else. So, um, because if you don't try different things, you'll never know what you're suited for. And there's so many young people out there, 18, 19, 20, who are just either going to school, taking nonsense courses, uh, stressing themselves out, and they know that's not what they really want to do. And sometimes they know what they want to do and are too afraid to go after it, and sometimes they have no idea. And for people who know what they want to do and are too afraid to go after it because they think they're not smart enough, they think they're not capable enough, you are capable enough. And, it, and if it doesn't work out, it'll be the thing that will lead to the thing. You don't have to fear of, about things not working out. Because even if that particular thing doesn't, it will be the thing that will lead to the thing. You've got the tools that you need to succeed. You've got the tools that you need to do what you need to do. And for those who don't know what they want to do, you just, 
you just need to learn by doing so. A volunteer here and apprentice there and you know research uh, jobs and, and some people learn by doing and some people learn by reading books you can get books on a anything so do your research and study and and learn and throw your whole self at something Try it with your whole heart, and then if you try different things, you'll eventually find your purpose. You'll eventually find what, you, what you're called to do for that season. And sometimes you have one purpose for one season, and another purpose for another season. So... So your purpose may change or your purpose may may be steady from for all time. And it's funny how God will send the right mentors when you're in the right place and you'll I, and you'll say, How do I know what my purpose is? You'll believe me. You'll know it when you find it. God has a way of speaking to his children. You'll know it when you find it. Don't be afraid to jump in. And don't be afraid to make mistakes too. Mistakes are a part of life. And uh, you, you'll learn from your mistakes. you learn greater lessons from your mistakes and failures than you do from your successes and you also develop character you also develop tools that you need you also develop lessons in integrity and fortitude and tenacity and be tenacious if something doesn't work out don't give up don't throw in the towel and another clue to purpose is what makes you mad? What is the thing you see that you wish you could change? Purpose is often what problem are you here to solve? I heard a pastor say that one, one time and it's so awesome. The key to your purpose is one question. What problem are you here to solve? What do you see around you that just makes you upset? Makes you have righteous anger? It, it just boils your blood every time you see it. It could be the environment. It could be something in media. It could be, you know, a lot of things. If you've heard me uh, preach before, you will you will know that I have a passion uh, for the gospel and the church, and I often talk talk about the church because it's what I love, it's what what I know, it's what I'm passionate about, and I'm and I often talk about what I see for preachers and pastors and what the body of Christ could be doing and are not because that that's a part of my purpose and another part of my purpose is to do film um, I was reading uh, Matthew McConaughey the other day um, his book green light read the audio version is phenomenal anyway I was reading this the other day and he said, I got tired of doing romantic comedies. And I was thinking, I, I'm like, I love romantic comedies, but they're kind of frou-frou. They're kind of everything's happy, everything's okay. But one of my things is to add some grit, to add some character, to add some depth to these romantic characters 
So people will want to do that, to do it. So um, that that's one part of my purpose that I discovered just yesterday because it drove me crazy that all these serious actors think that romantic comedies are just frou-frou when we could have depth of character, but people people just don't tend to think of romantic comedies having a uh, real meaning in life and all, all that stuff to the screen. And even in my writing, I want to uh, bring real stories. Um, I want to bring real fictional stories that not only Christians read, but that, that other people read as well. See, those are areas that I'm passionate about. Even music and all that kind of thing. I want to see in different genres of music come together, um, both in the, uh, especially in the Christian realm. I want to see us change um, what it, what worship music is. I, I want to see, um, like, us really bring God into life and just stop pretending that he's this kind of uh, uh, ethereal thing up there that doesn't have anything to do with our lives when he is the answer for life. You, you see, you see my passion for all those for all these areas of, of preaching and uh, the body of Christ and entertainment and music and books and movies. See, see, because um, those are the problems I'm designed to solve. So what problems are you designed to solve? And what fears are holding you back? Confront them, deal with them, and, and know that God has got your back for it. And you, you cannot afford to let fear hold you back because the world is waiting for you to achieve your purpose. The world is waiting for you to preach that sermon. The world is waiting for you to write that song. The world is waiting for you to start that business because it's, there's a problem that you are designed to solve. And because there's a problem that you designed to solve, you have to get up off your butt and and know that God has got your back. And I'm here to push you today to say you can, you will, you must achieve your purpose. You can, you will, you must achieve your purpose. Whether it be several purposes at, at, in your lifetime or whether it be just one purpose. And no purpose is greater than another. If your purpose in calling is to just assist other moms, to let them know that they're not alone, or, or to give them helpful tips, or to uh, share with them your experience uh, with being a mom, that's a great purpose. Or maybe your purpose is to just, is to raise those children and one of those children we will be prime minister one day maybe your purpose is to go to the moon maybe your purpose is to um be a researcher to to stop pandemics like covid from happening whatever your purpose is whether it be big or small Start on the level you're on and do it. 
do it as do it as good for fifty people or twenty people or ten people as you would for a million people or or a thousand people. Don't let the size of the crowd dictate how well you do what you do. Do it the same as you for ten people as you would do it for two thousand. And you'll be surprised where God takes you. Thank you guys for hanging with me today. I usually do this tomorrow tomorrow and I may do one tomorrow, but God was really um really putting in my spirit today to do this. So thank you guys. Bye. And the reason why I call this what you do in the middle is because it's it's not really about the courses you take when you're in school or really about the job you get out of school. It's what you do when you're waiting for this. What kind of purpose you follow when you're waiting for this? When you're waiting for something, what do you, what do you do? My answer is keep pushing, keep striving, be tenacious, don't give up. That's exactly what you do while you're waiting. That that's exactly what you do while while you're while you're wanting destiny to come keep striving keep pushing don't give up and don't let go that's what you do in the middle thank you guys so much take care The Lord just put something in my spirit. Your your best will breed fruit if you just hold on. Your best will breed fruit if you just hold on. Hold on. Don't give up. There is somebody that's going to be listening to this that is about to give up on what God has told them or what God has put in them. Your best will breed fruit if you just hold on. And you're like, I'm tired of doing this. Nobody's seeing me. Nobody's doing this. But nobody's seeing me. Nobody's paying attention. I feel like I'm in this by myself. I'm putting out 110% and nobody sees me. But I'm here to tell you, God is seeing you. God is seeing right where you are right now. And he's saying, your best 
will breed fruit if you just hold on. Don't give up. You are so close, so close. Keep plugging. Be tenacious. Keep on striving. Keep on going. Don't stop. Keep running. Don't try and imitate people. Um, just try and be a, a better you. And I was thinking the other day about the difference between emu emulation and mentorship. Mentorship for, for me is that when you, when you see somebody that is doing what you want to do, and you take the principles of what they do and add it to what you do to come up with something totally new. Mentorship is when you take the principles of what somebody does and add it to what you do to create something to create something new. So, it's all well and good to have mentors. In fact, you should have mentors. Find someone that is doing what you want them to do and ask them questions. Provide them for all the information that you would, you would want to know about that particular thing and then add it to what you do. Now, now, there's a difference between that and trying to emulate, emulate somebody so much that you want to become them, you want to walk like them, talk like them, and all that stuff. But the problem with that is the lane that they're occupying is already occupied. And the lane that you're supposed to occupy is di is different. So be mentored by them, look up to them, ask them questions about what they do to get better. But know that you you are a better you are a better you are better at being an original than you are at being a cheap copy. And it's, and it's okay, even helpful to be mentored by someone, but don't forget to add you to, don't forget to take the principles of what they do and then add it to what you do to create something wonderful and great. Many people are just trying to copy this and copy that, and they're missing out on what they give to the world. What they don't understand is what they give to the world is so great, so wonderful that it is beyond description. So they hide behind um, um, imitation because they think they're not good enough. But you, you are good enough. You're more than good enough. You're great. God has made you great. And God doesn't make anything that is not good, that is not great, that is not stupendous, that is not superlative, just awesome. Just be the best you you can be.